Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. This video will be part five of the Maya to Unreal Environment tutorial series. Last video we talked about uh, making adjustments to collisions, uh, dragging in our models into the viewport to see the scale, and updating increase in the scale size according to our playable uh, third person character point of view. Um, so this video we're going to talk about how to add materials back to our world. Um, materials are already imported in through the FBX that we imported for each one of these. Um, so I'm going to import uh, with this example, I'll show you to run through these four uh, different uh, window or window, half wall, street base, and sidewalk. Uh, so that's these four individual ones. Uh, the same material is applied to these four as those pieces are applied into the combined version. So you should see it update on my combined one mesh and then my four individual ones at the same time. <clears throat> so uh, I've already imported in all of my textures and then here's my materials. Uh, so let's start with uh, the sidewalk straight. So I have to find my sidewalk material, sidewalk mat, and I'm gonna double click on that. This opens up the material editor. Uh, material editor uh, is a separate window and uh, it's probably going to have a base node which is a color parameter node uh, vector parameter that's already assigned to the base color of the material so if you've done materials in Maya before it has the same type of setup as that stingray PBS material uh, we've created a base color a metallic a roughness and a normal for each one of our objects uh, and we're going to funnel them in here um, it also has a material preview and the details panel for the materials over here on the left. With each material, it probably goes ahead and creates this basic color parameter. Uh, I don't need that, so this is the sidewalk matte material, and I'm going to delete that parameter. So I'm going to click this parameter and delete it. But before I delete it, uh, most of Unreal's blueprints and material setup is this visual drag and drop node setup. So we basically have a node, we drag from one pin over to another pin like the uh, RGB color which is the white top one of our texture image over to the base color and that connects this parameter over to uh, the channel of that material. So it's a visual drag and drop system. Hopefully it's pretty easy to set up. Um, I don't need that parameter that's already in there as default so I'm going to delete that out. And let's move this down. In my texture standpoint, I need to go to textures and I need to find, let me just set my other screen for a second. I need to find my sidewalk uh, texture. So there's sidewalk base color, sidewalk metallic. I have some other ones like mixed AO. I don't want to do that because I want ambient inclusion to be rendered at real time if I turn that on. But I want base color, metallic, normal, and roughness. So what I'm going to do is select those four maps. I'm going to hold down control and click those four. And then in my material for my sidewalk, I'm going to drag those four texture maps into the material. It pulls a texture sample from those materials in there. It takes a minute for it to load those previews. But let me move them so that they are not on top of one another. Typically, I'll, I would want them to kind of align vertically or so that they're not overlapping. And the way I usually set this up is I put uh, base color on the top. Uh, metallic next, um, let's see, roughness next, there you go, and then normal at the bottom. That's the vertical order of how they need to be, or how they are aligned in the material. Uh, so let's move this down a little bit. So you can just click and drag in the uh, material editor on a material node. This is the main material node, but the individual texture maps need to be synced into. Uh, and then you can click and drag on nodes to move them around. If you hold down right click, you can pan around to be able to see different areas. You can also zoom in and out with the middle mouse click wheel. So basically all I have to do is drag in my four texture maps, base color, metallic, roughness, normal, into my material from my content browser. And then where it says RGB for this texture sample, I'm gonna click and drag RGB, which is all three channels for that texture and drag that for the base color, RGB, into base color. Uh, that will update it. Here's my metallic map. I'm going to click and drag RGB from the metallic map into the RG or the metallic 
channel of my material. This is my roughness, RGB from the roughness map into roughness of the material. Here is my normal, RGB from normal into the normal of my material. Okay, here you go. All right, so there's my preview for this sidewalk material. It's not meant to be on a sphere. You can come in here and change it to a cube uh, and let that run there. Uh, but that's just on a generic object that's not UV mapped for this particular sidewalk object. But that's all we have to do is sync up from the RGB of each texture map to the proper channel in the material. We do want to make sure we click save. We're going to go and click save as I'm talking because that could take a couple of minutes. It has to save the package out. It has to save the materials out. Um, so once it saves, it goes ahead and applies it to anything that already has that material on it. So let's go ahead and look at our world here. And there's my sidewalk. The sidewalk already had this material applied to it. And if I go over here, sidewalk already has the material applied to it. Looks pretty good. So that shows you uh, that the material works properly. Um, let me close this out again and let's go back to our meshes. If an object doesn't have the right material applied to it, we can double click the static mesh. Open that up in static mesh editor. And then in the material slot, we can just go find the right material. So click on the names, whatever it says, default or whatever, and go to sidewalk mat there. And that will change that material so it applies it to um, that object in the world. All right, so let's do the same thing. We'll do street base. Let's go to our material. Uh, this one's called street plane material. I'm going to move this out of the way. I don't need this param material, so I'm going to delete that out. Uh, this is in the street plane material. Go to our textures and find my street plane textures. Street uh, base color, street metallic, street normal, street roughness. There you go. I'm going to drag those into uh, the material editor. There you go. I'll move these up so that I can see them. So I do base color, uh, metallic, roughness, and then uh, normal. Okay, let's move this down a little. Right, so this is my base color. Click and drag from RGB over to base color channel. This is my metallic. Click and drag from RGB over to metallic. It's black for this material because I don't want any metallic for the road. Um, this is the roughness, so roughness goes into the roughness channel. And this is a normal that will go into a normal channel. Okay, that's it. I'm going to click save. Let that save out. All right, that's done. So then now I should have my street texture on there. Let's see if it'll update the road on there. It should. Perhaps not. But there's a showing that material is working. Let's go to our third one. Uh, and uh, well, I'm going to skip over that one because I'm going to show you something with opacity. So if you have opacity, we'll make the change to here for opacity. Um, so we need our wall window material. It's this one. All right. So if you have an opacity map, we need to do a couple of things differently. So let's go ahead and get our textures in. <clears throat> this one's called wall window wall window uh, base color metallic normal uh, i'm also going to select my opacity and my roughness so the next this one's this one's going to have my opacity channel with it as well so let's take those with the opacity and load them into the material editor let's see if we can get everything synced up here roughness there we go um, normal and then we'll put our opacity underneath i think opacity actually would go above it so that's fine we'll do that as far as vertical hierarchy of what the material is set up all right so let's do the same process let's take the base color and drag that into base color channel this is our metallic and drag that in metallic channel this is our roughness and put that into roughness and our normal would go into normal Okay, let's, let's swap the position of these two. Okay, all right. So there is an opacity 
channel and if I click and drag my opacity map into that opacity channel it's grayed out which means it's not actually going to use any opacity detail um, so I can go ahead and drag that opacity map into the opacity channel but it's not going to work so what I need to do is select my material I need to do two things into the details panel if your model needs opacity we need to change the blend mode to translucent okay it says default as opaque so with that material material selected uh, material node blend mode to translucent okay that opens up the opacity but turns off metallic roughness and normal so we want to still have those three other channels in here um, it'll keep base color but does not keep the other ones so first thing is change the blend mode to translucent we need to go down find is it right? translucency yeah translucency lighting mode I need to change this from volumetric non-directional to surface forward shading okay so when I change that to surface forward shading that will open up the metallic roughness of normal again but keep the opacity so that will allow the material to be or have transparency to it uh, let's go ahead and save because there is going to be an issue. Let's go look at it now. Let's click save. It's actually going to be inverted because my opacity map has a black uh, background for the areas that should be opaque and gray for the areas that should be transparent. I actually need to invert those values and I'll show you how to do that. But I'll show you if we just leave it like this, it is going to show transparency, but it's going to be the inverse of that transparency. So let it. Uh, process and save. Hopefully it'll update here in a second. Still waiting for it to save here. I'll pause the video until it does. It gets done saving. Okay, so it's uh, finished saving. Uh, so if I take a look at this file or this model. Uh, it is actually backwards uh, so the rest of the wall piece is transparent um, and it's not really approaching it properly so what we need to do is make just one final adjustment to this uh, and that's because if the areas you want to be opaque are actually black in the opacity map we need to invert that uh, so with my opacity node that goes into the opacity channel if I hold down alt and click on that opacity name that removes the connection what I need to do is add what's called a one minus node, which will do the invert for me. If I do texture sample, drag out from RGB and type in one minus. So a simple math command that just inverts it. One minus. Okay. Um, so from RGB, drag out a node and then click one minus. And then now from this one minus, if I funnel that into opacity, I'll look and see what that does. It may update my preview for it. So we'll get to update that. Let's go ahead and hit save while we're waiting. Uh, that will invert the texture properly so that way the right areas are transparent and the right areas are opaque. So if you have transparency or an opacity map, you can uh, set it up this way. The opacity map has to be a separate file, uh, and if need be, you can add that one minus command to be able to set transparency properly. All right, uh, I'm gonna pause, uh, wait for this to save. All right, so the video, uh, the, the material has saved now. So there you can see uh, the white areas are gonna be opaque. The window areas are gonna be transparent. So that one minus is really helpful to do inverts within the material. Uh, let's go look at our model now. So our model is, is positioned and displaying that geometry properly. The wood areas are opaque. Uh, the, let's see, uh, if I can get a little closer, the glass area is transparent. You can see through it. Okay. Uh, on my final scene, you can see that it loaded that texture in properly. All right, uh, so right now I'm going to go ahead, um, uh, load my 
uh, other file that has all of my textures loaded, what I would do next is go in here to every individual material, make sure I load those texture maps as what I was just explaining. Uh, so that way all of my materials have the textures loaded. It's time consuming, so I'm just gonna go ahead and load my other project that already has this all set up, and then we'll talk about a couple other things. Um, so if I do file, uh, let's just save all for a second, and then file open project, I'm gonna go find my other project that I have all this set up previously. There you go. All right, I'm gonna pause the video while it loads because it's gonna take a couple of minutes. So when we get back, uh, the video should be loaded. Okay, so my project has loaded now. Uh, if I look at my materials, all my materials, my materials have all the previews, which means all my texture maps are loading properly. Uh, so I have all of my textures from my four individual parts as well as for my entire scene. Uh, the idea is just to make sure all of your materials do load how you want them to. Uh, I've got some lighting in here as well, but all of my textures load properly. Uh, it's a little time consuming, but that way all of your textures will load. One thing I did want to mention is that if you only have one-sided polygons, like I do with the inside of this trash can here, uh, if I open up that material, the only other thing I've changed is I've turned on in the details panel for this trash can material, I've turned on two-sided. So if I turn off two-sided, let's save that and I'll show you what that looks like. Hopefully it won't take too long. It's only gonna render one side of that polygon. So if you take a look at that now, the inside of the trash can is not visible. Okay, so if you have one-sided geometry, it is only gonna show you that one exterior side. So within that material, we need to go select the material and over here on the details panel, click two-sided, okay? then resave, and this way it's gonna render both sides of that polygon. Um, so that way we don't have to have a lot of thickness in areas, we don't need to visually show that. All right, there we go. So now this trash can, we can see the inside and outside. Okay, so that's something else that you might wanna think about if you have one-sided geometry like this trash can, uh, we need to turn on two-sided for that material. All right, so everything is displaying how we want to, the texture is displaying properly. Um, I'll come back and in the next video talk about lighting and kind of finalizing our project.